It's right there. And basically what we're going to be using is we're going to be saying mass of an element and one mole of the compound. So that means that if there's two, ele two of that element, like two hydrogens, we would then have to multiply two times the molar mass of it so that we know how much of that total mass was hydrogen contributing. Okay? And then you're going to have the total molar mass of the entire compound. So that's kind of going to be what we're working on right now. Okay? So if you don't know where your packet is, don't worry about it right this second. But I would find it before tomorrow. All right. So for percent composition, the simple way that you're going to be thinking of percent composition is just going to be part over whole. Okay? And then you're going to multiply that by 100. I would say the most difficult part of this is going to be knowing how many of each element you have, right? So that's been something that you guys have kind of struggled with a little bit. So make sure um, that you're practicing that a little bit today, okay? So part over whole times 100, okay? And that you're going to do in parentheses or do it in two steps. All right. Um, so I'm going to kind of actually skip you guys down to number two, which is potassium oxide. And I'm going to have you do number three on your own. Fe, so we're going to do iron three oxide, which would be Fe2O3. Okay, so when we get, when you guys go to do one on your own, it's going to be number three. Okay, so percent composition of potassium oxide. So potassium oxide is K2O. So when we have to solve for per percent composition, you're basically going to find the percentage of the potassium and percentage of the oxygen. So hopefully you guys all picked up a periodic table. We're going to be using those a lot. Okay. So to start us out, we're going to talk about getting that molar mass. So just like we have practiced, okay, how many potassiums do we have in this compound right here? There's two, yep. So we're going to have a two. We're going to multiply it by the molar mass of potassium. So potassium was right here, 39.098. So I'm going to go ahead and have two times 39.098, okay? So we're going to plug that into our calculator. And I'm going to round to the second decimal place, okay? So 78.196, which would be 78.20, okay? All right. Then we're going to get our oxygen. How many oxygens are there in this compound? There's only one. So we're going to say one times oxygen's molar mass, which is 15.999. So notice I'm not rounding my periodic table numbers, but I round my answer after I multiply things, right? So that means, yay, we're going to round this one. We're going to say 16.00. Because I'm going to go ahead and claim that we're multiplying it, so I'm going to round it. All right, let's keep it simple. All right, so what we have here is our mass of potassium, our mass of oxygen in potassium oxide. Now we need the total mass. So this is our K2O, okay? So that means we're going to add those two values together. So I'm going to add together 78.20 plus 16.00. We're going to get 94.2 as our answer. So our molar mass of this is 94.20 grams per mole. All right, cool. So that's step one. You've got to figure out how much mass each element is contributing and the overall mass, okay? So there's our parts, there's the whole, okay? So we're trying to do this thing up here. Part over whole times 100. So now we're going to start doing the percentages. So for potassium, we're going to have our part, which is 78.20. We're going to divide it by that total molar mass, 94.20. We're going to type that in. Okay. And then we're going to have this decimal show up. So 0.83, right? So with that, our last step is to turn it into a percent, which means we're going to multiply it by what number? 100. We're going to multiply by 100. So multiply it by 100. The shortcut to that is move that decimal two to the right. So we had 83.01%. Okay? So that's our percent of potassium. For oxygen, OK, 
Okay, let's look at what we had. We had 16.00 was our top number, so the part over the whole molar mass. We're going to divide those first, and then we'll multiply by 100. So I'm going to get 16.00 divided by 94.20. I got a decimal. Again, that shortcut is just move that decimal 2 to the right. So 1, 2 would get a 16.9. Or we can just multiply by 100. And we get 16.985. So I'm going to round that up to 16.99%. Okay? So you have your potassium and you have your oxygen. And that right there is the final answer. Okay? So, what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you guys try number three. So, use your elbow buddy, okay, work together. So, to start you out, um, remember you're going to get your parts by multiplying by their subscripts, whatever they've got, okay? So, for example, if we have FE, how many FEs are there? There's going to be two, so you're going to do two times whatever you find on your periodic table. For oxygen, you're going to have how many? Not six. Nope, not six. There's going to be three. Three. Three times, and then your molar mass from your periodic table. And then you're going to get those all together to get your Fe2O3. You're going to have that total molar mass. Okay? So start with that. Okay? And I'll kind of reveal at least those answers here in a couple minutes. Okay, so... Most of you guys got through your molar mass. You want to just double check that those are the answers that you got. And as long as those matched up, go ahead and move into that percent composition. Okay, so it sounds like a lot of us kind of got through the last calculation. So when you guys took your part over whole, and if you're off by a decimal, it's not going to affect it too much, okay? So don't, don't freak out too much about that. Um, but when you divided that... And then you multiply by a 100. Um, the first one, I got 69.94%. So iron was 69.94%. And then oxygen, I got a 30.06%. 